Lights, camera, action. It's time for Movie Magic, the podcast where we discuss all things movie related. I'm your host, Abigail Pollard, and today we'll be talking about the Harry Potter film series. My guest today is the person who taught me all about Harry Potter when I was younger, my dad, Ron Pollard. Hey, Dad, thanks for agreeing to do this for me. Sure. (laughs) Are you ready to talk about the Harry Potter movies? Yes, I am. (laughs) Great. Let's get started. What is your favorite Harry Potter movie? I would probably have to say my favorite Harry Potter movie is uh, The Goblet of Fire. That was uh, about the point where Voldemort actually came back, uh, where we had a physical aspect of what he was. Uh, Prior to that, it was, you know, the snake. Um, But that was actually the the movie that he made an appearance in, uh, Wormtail, did the stuff, you know, all that in the cemetery and brought him back. Um, and that's where he really became a, a physical being as the Dark Lord. Alright, cool. So, what is your favorite scene, then? Uh, probably related to that being my favorite movie is the scene in the graveyard um, where Voldemort is created. Uh, Cedric Diggory dies there. Uh, Wormtail takes Harry's blood, pours it in the, or drips it into the cauldron, drops the, uh, whatever that creepy little thing is that turns into, uh, Voldemort, and, you know, he actually comes together, then all the Death, a- death Eaters appear, uh, he, he kind of puts them down for ignoring him for all that time, claiming that nobody searched for him or what have you. But uh, that was probably a really good turning point in the whole series of movies. <laughs> right. So then, like, after that, um, no one believes Harry and Dumbledore that Voldemort is back. So, and then that ends up forming, like, Dumbledore's army after the fact. When they're all like, okay, well, did you really see him? Did... You see Cedric Diggory really die? You know? Yeah, all that was in the the newspapers and everything. Uh, People thought that Harry and Dumbledore were making it up. Um, You know, but that that was actually when it happened. As a viewer of the movie, you knew it happened, and you kind of felt bad for Harry and for Dumbledore because they knew the truth. Uh, The minister was denying it. Yeah. You know, the newspapers were saying Harry was crazy, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it definitely gives a insight kind of to how media and fake news kind of works around today. So, next question is what, or not what, who is your favorite human character and why? Um, Actually, I'm going to have to go with the basic here. Harry Potter is my favorite human character. Uh, He went through so much as a child, uh, raised by his aunt and uncle, who were not fond of him. You know, he didn't know anything until Hagrid picked him up, and he went to Hogwarts. And that was when he figured out, you know, over the course of time, who he was and what he was. You know, and of course, by the end of all the movies, you know, he was a very powerful wizard. Mm Mm-hmm. So... Definitely in favor of the main character there. Correct. Um, Yeah, I'd say my answer to that is kind of in the opposite, is I'm a fan of Severus Snape. (laughs) Just because I think he turns out to kind of be the tragic hero at the end. In a way he does, but Snape throughout the the series of movies, 
Uh, you never really knew for sure where Snape stood until, of course, at the end. You know, was he allies with Dumbledore and the quote-unquote good people, or was he actually a Death Eater? I mean, they had admitted to he was a Death Eater, but he turned spy. Or the Order of the Phoenix. Mm-hmm. But... I still think he's a great character. <laughs> um, okay, so who is your favorite non-human character? I'm going to have to say Dobby, the house elf. Uh, he was very brave. He was loyal. Uh, he actually had some funny lines in the movie. You know, he, he was a little comedian so somewhat, if you actually watch the movies. Dobby was just very enjoyable. Uh, and he basically died as a hero. Yeah. So, I think that also relates to the fact that you really want a house elf. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> like, I know we've been over this. Um, yeah, it's in my favorite non-human animal, or non-human character, I, is the animal, and uh, probably Buckbeak. Just because, like... It's interesting to see from, like, CGI at the time, you know, how they did that, and, like, just how, I don't know, I love how invested Hagrid is with his animals, so Buckbeak is definitely on the top of my list for that. Um, okay, so the main Harry Potter question, forever and always, is what house do you think you would be in? Probably Ravenclaw. Um, it seems like the Ravenclaw people were um, low profile, quiet. Um, I, they, they, they didn't seem like they were too much taking sides in the whole Gryffindor and Slytherin battle, per se. Um, you know, they were just kind of laid back. It was like they were just there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you were in Ravenclaw, do you think you'd be friends with Luna? Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Uh, uh, she was pretty out there, so I'm not really 100% certain. Yeah, just stay with your books. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so how do you think the film series should have ended? I really did like the ending. Um, the way it went down uh, was rather interesting. Um, you know, to have you know, Snape die there at the end. Um, there are a couple of questions, I guess, that were left unanswered. You know, what happened to the Death Eaters after after that battle was over? Um, I think the ones who didn't die were put in Azkaban. Okay, well, they, they never verify that one way or another. It's not, they don't show you newspapers at, you know, newspaper headlines like they did throughout most of the movies, mm -hmm. you know, exactly showing you what happened. Right. You know, all you know is that Voldemort died, you know, Harry killed him, um, you know, and, the, and then there's, boom, it's 20 years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have the um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child play that I think they're going to turn into a movie. I think I've heard that. I'm not really too sure how I feel about that, because uh, to me that that particular series is over. Mm -hmm. You know, it had a beginning, uh, it had a middle, it had an end. Uh, you can really tell the difference in the movies when um, the director was changed. Mm -hmm. I believe the first director did the first two movies. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of tell from there that it, it got a little bit darker. Yeah, I believe we went from Chris Columbus, who also directed Home Alone, to um, David Yates and his dark stuff in um, Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay, so out of all the wonderful characters who unfortunately died during the series, if you could have saved one that died, who would it be? I would probably have to say uh, Professor Snape. 
Um, you know, he did seem like there towards the end. You know, he he was a good person that we found out at the very end. Mm -hmm. uh, there were scenes throughout the whole series where he was, you know, not a very nice person. But at the end, you found out that he loved Lily and he would basically do anything he could for Harry Potter. Right. But, yeah, definitely Snape. He shows that bias towards Slytherin the whole time, which, of course, me being a Slytherin, I think that's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how we got from you being a Ravenclaw and Mom being in Hufflepuff to you guys have a Slytherin child. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> all right. That's all the time we have for this episode of Movie Magic. Thanks, Dad, for being a guest on this episode. Sure, anytime. <laughs> Join me next time with another guest, and I'll talk about movies from the Marvel Studios. Until then, I'm your host, Abigail Pollard. Stay magical.